back to the new agenda. My name is Candice New and I am your host. I'm super excited today um, to hang out with you guys and bring out some incredible guests. Um, today is kind of a special day for me because I get to do something that is near and dear to my heart and um, that uh, is kind of cool for me, maybe for you guys too, I don't know. But my first guest today, actually, you guys got the opportunity to meet her a couple of weeks ago. She came out and hosted my show. Um, she is one of my incredible interns, and I'm really, really excited because I love having interns. I love the opportunity to mentor and to um, help uh, young people as they search for their career goals and as they, as they figure out who they are and what they want to be and just help them to get there. Um, so you guys have met her already, but she's out on my show again today. Her name is Ophelia. Come on out, darling. Hello. Woo! Hi, baby. Oh, good to see you. I am so glad. So Ophelia and I haven't got to hang out much because I was in the Philippines, and then she was on this awesome show. Why don't you sit? Sit, sit. You can move the pillows. They just go right under there. You look so fabulous with Philippines. Thanks. You can put those pillows right under there. So um, Ophelia and I didn't get a chance to see each other much this week since I've been back because she actually has been performing in a really awesome play. Oh, I know it closed already, Ophelia, but can you tell us a little bit about the show you were in? What's it called? Where was it? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so my play took place in Santa Fe. It was called Something Happens on the Way to the Forum. It was a comedy. Yeah. And I played the character Panacea, which is a courtesan. Love and that. And so it was so fun to like portray something out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and just like embody this new woman you know she's so empowered in her essence and her goddessness that like you know when i just went on that stage and i gave my little courtesan dance i was like this is gonna be the best damn courtesan dance you've played you're allowed to, it's okay this is I public tv <laughs> <laughs> you're allowed to say whatever you want on here <laughs> I have, you know i'm ever gonna do you know but it was super fun everybody was so professional and it was just an awesome experience to sort of do a play that was different from what I'm used to usually doing. So yeah, because really you usually do film acting. Yes, I usually do film acting, so doing something different, I was like, okay, okay, but yeah. So what do you feel like was the biggest difference between stage and screen? Oh my God, it's crazy. There's such a difference. When you're on stage, it's like instant because everybody's there watching you mm -hmm. and you're like, well, I can't freeze up. But on screen, it was like you get more times to sort of redo it, mm -hmm. but it's also like you're more like, inside yourself when you're screen acting because you're really trying to like portray those emotions more whether when you're on in theater on stage you're like out here and you're like loud and flamboyant and like all of this and this but then when you're like though when the camera's right in front of you you're like oh god okay just gonna take it down a notch and sort of internalize it and mm -hmm. then like let it show like you're just having a conversation with somebody yeah you know? natural i feel like it's very natural for you to be on stage <laughs> started in theater okay so okay. I started in theater when I was like five I was okay. like hi mom and dad do you think you could enroll me in this local theater down the road so they did they're like um sure so I actually have always known I wanted to do acting in some way or another and then so they enrolled me in this theater production and then I started doing that and then I got the role of Greece or no sorry the play Greece and the role of Frenchie so I played Frenchie, and that when was you were five. I, well, I think I was like ten. No, I started, no. Really? I was like ten. You were in Greece no. when you were ten. Oh Hold my on. god. No, it was. So I started off doing other stuff, and yeah, then yeah, no, yeah. I was fifteen. Okay, that's that. Makes and then sense. a ways on the way, I turned fifteen, and I auditioned for the local production of Greece, and then they were like, you know, since it was like a, more for like a, like young actors. Oh, okay, yeah. Like fifth, like. Something. Like teenagers or high yeah, school kids. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, I was still in high school, or yeah. I was in like middle school. I don't even know. It doesn't 15 matter. 15 or in high school. The timeline, Unless I'm you still fail. fabulous. That's right. And it doesn't matter. But that's whenever, whenever I got that role of Frenchie when I was 15, that's whenever I knew I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to do acting, regardless yeah. of what it takes to get there. You know, and I was like, okay, this is fun. But yeah, being on stage really helped with confidence and mm -hmm. like, and like finding your spot in life and just like, you know, just being yourself. Yeah. Just, yeah. I um, have always had a passion for acting as well. And for me, it's always been an interesting like dichotomy between stage and screen because there are so many similarities, but then there's a lot of differences. And there's a lot of things I appreciate about 
per performing on the stage and a lot of things I appreciate about about the screen. So like for me, I first of all always find it incredibly impressive that um, actors can carry like a two and a half hour long <laughs> oh my god musical okay like where they have to not only know their lines <laughs> holy crap but also sing and dance oh god in front of a live audience and you can't mess up at all and anything that goes awry you just have to like improvise your way through it so it's a whole crazy thing um and then of course you know but then it, it's also like this contained sort of thing right and it like yeah. almost like dies and like withers and dies which seems sort of sad but like i don't get to see your show i, I missed it i didn't get to go no. see it she didn't tell me when it was guys she wouldn't tell me the name of it either until today all i knew was is in santa fe <laughs> and i was like this girl like I for didn't real want to interfere with your fabulous life of thinking that i was being problematic so i just <laughs> oh oh okay we're having a different conversation now <laughs> no it's okay though no well i don't know See, that's a part of it, too. Were you anxious? Yes. I think that was a part of it, because I was so anxious, I kind of just, like, forgot to tell everybody and kind of just stay focused on this character, and I was just like, okay, nothing else, just this character. Because, like, you know, just... So do you know. feel like when you are performing live that it is, like, it brings more anxiety if, people in, if there are people in the audience that you know or if it's just an audience that you don't know or that feels unknown to I you? I feel like yes, because, like, those people that you know probably or sort of have like an expectation for you sure and then you're like what if I don't fulfill this and you get in mm -hmm. your head and you're freaking out and you're like oh my god like I'm sorry like I didn't do my best but like, it's okay you did your best like you looked amazing right but in my head it's completely different but out here they see something totally different so I just like have to remember that like yeah. it's different perspectives but having that support there is all that matters regardless of what it is the support is all that I needed to know yeah. that I can get through that show and get through like 20 more live performances. Right? Yeah, oh gosh. I know. But well, yeah. I, you know, I feel like um for me, like I have some social anxiety anyway. So many of you guys don't necessarily know that. Although I think I've started to like talk about it a little bit more because it was kind of an unknown fact until I had like this moment outside of this event that I was trying to go to a couple of like maybe months ago. And I had a whole like meltdown on social media and I was just like, so here I am. And people didn't realize it was really interesting. People reached out to me. They're like, I had no idea that you struggled with this, but I was literally like on social media because I just wanted to share like, hey, this is my experience and I've been trying to be better about social media, the bane of my existence. Um, and so I've been trying to be better about like posting and stuff and like just letting people kind of see me and whatever. Okay, because we're supposed to do things like that, right? I don't know. But, um, and so I posted about it and I was just like explaining that like I was literally sitting outside of this event that I wanted to go to. Um, I had people in there that I knew like were like expecting me and I really wanted to go inside, but I'd been sitting in my car for over 20 minutes like trying to coax myself to go inside because mm -hmm. I was having like such a high level of social anxiety that I just couldn't get out of the freaking car. And it was just like, I was like freaking out. And so, um, for me, I feel like when I have people that I know in the mm -hmm. audience, it actually is a comfort to me. But I also know, um, being a, a director, that there are a lot of times when my interns or my students or um, young actors that I know do not want me to go sit in <laughs> on their stuff. And it's so frustrating for me because I'm like, I want to see you. Oh, God. Okay, guilty of that. That's right. Like, that's the main reason. I'm just like, oh, my God, Candace is going to judge me. I am not going to judge I'm you. I'm just like, who cares? Who cares what people think? Just do your mm -hmm. thing because people are going to judge you regardless. And having people mm -hmm. that you know are there to help you, like, those are the people that you want to be there because, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I guess I just get in my head a lot, you know. Okay, well, so. <laughs> Talking about your head. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So I feel like there's something, oh, I feel like Ophelia. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Do you get that sometimes? I do. People are like, oh, Ophelia you laugh. And I'm like, um. Oh. Wow. Like, what? what happened to Ophelia? I feel like people sometimes are super inappropriate. Like, just like, okay. Anyways. So anyways. Yeah, but I do get I'm that. Sorry. Oh, I Ophelia you. I'm oh, like, I feel oh, you. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> But yes. Okay, so um, I feel like you look slightly different. Did you cut your hair? <laughs> I did cut my hair. Did I... you have a mental breakdown when I was gone and you missed me so much you cut your hair? <laughs> Dude, I was crying. <laughs> my heart was hurting so much because I was just like, oh, oh my God. Candace, my love, queen. And then I was like, why not, you know, have a fresh cut and just, you know, cut off the hair and just make it a little more. 
you know, it looks cute. Fun. I think it is fun. Well, and it's cute yeah. with the hat. Well, I do miss my long hair, but it was getting so dry and dead that I was like, okay, you know, I'm not going to put my mm-hmm. hair through this. You know, fresh start. And then this time, just really take better care of it so when it does start to grow, Can it'll I tell be you more. A yeah. secret? Yeah, please do, because I need it. So I'm covering it with this hat so no one looks. Oh my God, it's cute. <gasps> I, I bought a wig. Oh my God. I did. I bought you a wig. What wigs? I, I bought two, actually, because there was a really good deal. And so I got two of them. But I, I low key, like, because I put it on, because I, okay, so I bought a wig for mm-hmm. Halloween because I decided I was going to be like some, like, Duchess or fuck, I don't know what. Yeah. I, I don't know. I had a, a beautiful gown from like the 1800s or something, you know, like Bridgerton yeah. style. And I was like, I will be a Bridgerton girl. I don't even know the <laughs> name of my thing because I, I hate I hate names. But so that's what I wore for like Halloween, right? And I just like put it around like a queen literally and I had a, a mask and all of a sudden I bought a wig. And so I bought this beautiful wig that has all these beautiful curls. But while I was there, I also tried on a bunch of other wigs, obviously, because you have to like, duh. And so I tried on this long, dark haired wig that felt very much like my old hair, like when I had long hair. Because my hair is super dark. I don't know if people realize that my hair is like super dark because I'm, you know, Asian. And, um, and so it used to be super long and dark and curly, but I would straighten it. And so I would literally straighten my hair and it took forever. And so I got it and, and I, I kind of want to wear it. Like, I just want to wear it, like, not like for Halloween, just like to wear it to be like, Hey, I have long hair. <laughs> oh my God, stop. We're so similar. I literally, before I got here, I was so self-conscious about my hair cause I cut it so short cause I was like going through my, you know, Ophelia, early life, midlife, whatever it is, an Ophelia Aquarius crisis. I'm going to start <laughs> calling it that, an Ophelia Aquarius a crisis. I love that. And I was like, you know what? Cut the hair. It's driving me crazy. And I was like, once I saw it in the sink, I was like, oh, I want my hair back. But it's okay. But you know what? It's going to grow back healthier. And it's, it's going to grow back healthier and more beautiful, yes. and that's great. But what I was going to say was, I was thinking about, well, the other thing, too, why I wanted to cut my hair so short was so I can buy more wigs and then just start wearing new wigs instead of like coloring my hair. Yeah. I could just throw on a new colored wig and just Absolutely. have all these different personas and personalities. I love that. That's and so, great yeah. Idea. And whenever I came here, I was like, maybe I should go grab a wig real quick. And then, but then I didn't have enough time because you know yeah. me. Fashionably late as always. Yeah. But yeah. so with okay. the short hair, I might just cut it shorter, honestly. Or maybe I mean, I'll just shave it off and then just go full wig. We could, we could both shave our heads. Yeah, we should just shave our heads together Let's on the show. We'll be oh like, God, that today we're going to shave our heads and then we're going to just... I, I don't feel like the audience is going to... Like, my audience is not going to be, like, <laughs> uber shocked by that because <laughs> I've already either. done it multiple times. Um, so I don't know that I'm ready to shave my head again, mostly yeah. because dyeing it platinum costs more money when That's it's just new. Dyeing your hair costs so much and then uh-huh. it ruins it. But if you just get wigs, like, come on. I Girl. love a good wig. I, I just, love yeah. a good platinum dye. I'll be I, honest. It, it I got to get my hair great. redone. I yeah, need it, I I need it a little bit done. It's, it's, yeah. it's kind Did of, Did you, you dye know. your hair recently? No. No? It looks like you got it redone. Mm-hmm. It, just looks, it just looks so effortlessly thanks, beautiful. Thanks. Thanks. Um, yeah. Um, so I, um, yeah, A, your hair looks great. Thank you. But, but that's my whole thing. Next time, I'm going to have a closet full of just all my wigs. I will Welcome come to Cashmere Kitty's wig stash. I will come here and I will wear your wigs. Please, too. we can have a wig dress up. It'd be so I'm much telling fun. You, I I'm going to wear a wig next week on my show. Wait, what's that? Ah! I love wigs. Wigs make me so happy. Okay. Awesome. Well, now I don't care about my hair anymore. So I'm a wig queen now. I'm wiggies. I have to ask oh. about these boots. Oh, my go-go boots. Yay. Um, wh- what is there to ask? Uh, first ask of all, boots? like, okay, A, where did you get them? I actually, I believe I found these at a thrift store. I'm Did you really? You, thrift stores have the best things. I love thrifting. And I was like, oh my God. you, me, pink, go, go, go. Yes. Okay, thrift, you And they're through. like a pastel pink. They're a pretty pink. I like I them a love, lot. No, they're so fun. I'm telling you, thrift stores have the best stuff. And it's unique because it's like you find something that mm-hmm. may or may not. And nobody else has exactly. it now. Exactly. So mm-hmm. you're like, oh, an individual. Oh, girl, we're going shopping. We should. We need I to love that. Shopping. All right, so um, I brought you on because I wanted to chat with you about um, hosting my show. Yes. So I want to know. So you had the opportunity to host two of my shows, and I, well, I was out of town in the Philippines, which was great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I sometimes, you know, worry about what's going to happen with my show when I'm gone, and sometimes I just, like, don't have it, and I just play my other shows on repeat. But why when I had you here? And so um, first of all, I wanted to know, like, A, how did it go? Well, A, it was so fun, and it once again got me out of my comfort zone and got me more comfortable on camera. Um, and 
I guess it's just, it was just super cool to just be you and more people and then just sort of see all the behind the scenes of what, like how everything happens. Mm -hmm. Like just because I was on camera didn't mean I didn't want to know what was happening off camera. Right. So that was really cool too to get a more personal experience. Yeah. It's something that like, like you're not just thrown in it. But you're like, okay, I get to like do something that I'm comfortable with and sort of wake, like wake. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Work my way up. <laughs> yes. Well, I think you did a great job. Did you watch yourself? I did. Of course I did. But I actually didn't because I was confused. I was like, wait, Comcast? I thought this was going to be on like YouTube. So um, A, it is on YouTube okay. um, now. So it'll be on Comcast Channel 27 okay. on Saturday and Sunday mornings. You can also watch it on our website, though, in case you didn't know that. Oh, so you can watch it on our website. Nope, on, not on our website. Yeah. On Studio 519's okay. website. Um, Studio519.com, ABQ. Studio519abq.com slash watch. Um, so you can watch it there. Um, but a week after it's released, it goes up on YouTube. Okay. And then you can watch it. At, you can, like, it's linked to our website, the Catharsis Media website. But um, you can also just YouTube the new agenda, and you'll find your episodes. Oh, that I want to say that one of your episodes, for something, for some reason, wasn't up, um, like like a couple of days ago. But I think Amanda might have fixed it, so you might be able to check in. Okay, good, because I really wanted to repost this to like my Instagram to mm -hmm. sort of start, per you know, promoting my actress persona. Absolutely. But um, yeah, it was really awesome to be on your show and to sort of get that, get that on screen time, and just get that comfortableness and just really just do it up so i'm gonna ask you mm -hmm. to critically think no not about thinking. Ah, you're free <laughs> you don't have to think and now i have to think that's right and well I, because we grow that's how we grow <laughs> yes, right i'm joking thinking cap on okay, so i want you to think about you watched yourself at least one of the episodes yes um tell me about where you feel like you maybe did really well and maybe where you mm -hmm. might want to grow Ooh. okay so where i did really well was um, styling myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did well on the presentation of, of like, okay, trying to, like, make my makeup look like... Like, I don't even like, know how to do my makeup, like, so, like, we need to have a different conversation yeah. later. <laughs> well, <laughs> to, like, I, get me dressed up. Well, what I did well was, like, I would say, like, the outer appearance of, like, really presenting this character... But then I'd say what I could have done so much better on was the conversation part of like asking the questions more certainly and not waiting in between and hearing these long awkward pauses of us just staring back and forth. Like we were just like, there was one point in it where we were just looking back and forth at each other. Like there were crickets in the room and I was like, oh God, oh God. <laughs> and then in my mind I was like, free. I was like, no, Julia, it's fine. Just they don't know what you know and what you don't know. So I just pulled out a question of thin air, and they were, like, talking for the rest of the time. And I was like, oh, You're like, oh thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> well, that's what I could have did better on. What I could have did better on was preparing myself. Mm -hmm. Preparation is something that I lack because I'm used to just, like you said, improvising everything. Because back again to theater, a, a lot of it is you can, like, improvise and, and like, improv it. But then in this real-life situation, you can't just improv everything of your life because it starts to catch up. And that's what I do a lot. Well, yeah. and I will say yes and no, right? So I actually felt like you were too dependent on the cards and the notes that I gave <gasps> really? you. And that is what got you stuck because you wanted to stick to what I put because maybe you felt like, oh, God, Candace is watching, and if I don't do all the things, <laughs> which you did skip some of the things, okay? Yeah. Like the things that I thought were going to be fun, like a screaming contest, come on. That's funny. Running <laughs> around like weirdos. Like I definitely put – okay, friends, I did put some things in here, like maybe that um, – maybe would have been fun for you and less fun for Ophelia. <laughs> maybe that's why I didn't do it, because I was like, this is kind of cringy. It is. And I was Sometimes like, it is, but uh, sometimes, you know, it's funny, right? I know, and that's um, another thing I said I need to do, work on getting out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. preparing, being more certain of myself. And having fun. And having fun. Like, have a good time with it. That's really important. But then again, you're right. I did overthink it, like everything else, because, mm -hmm. like, Candace is watching, and if I have one slip-up, I'm done. Oh, and, and that I can't is so be done because I've just begun. Oh my gosh, you're rhyming. But it's fine. I think you did a really good job. Thank you. And I think that you should go with those instincts and allow yourself to just be natural. Just ask those questions and see where the conversation goes because that's really what our show is about anyways. Yeah. It's really about that. And you have a great ability to talk to people and so you shouldn't doubt yourself. 
So. I feel like I'm gonna cry. Stop. Ah, it's okay. I'm not gonna be emotional. So I actually brought a friend with me today. Um, now you've met this friend. Uh, you wait. have not had the opportunity to do any research because I did not tell you who was gonna be on my show today. Okay. Okay. Huh. And um, so you are not prepared. <laughs> right. Not at all. However, um, you are going to help me interview our next guest today. Oh, no. Aren't you excited? Yeah. And I usually make my guests stay seated where they are, but because we're both going to be t talking with this young man, okay. I'm going to have you actually scooch over. Oh. So that way he can be in between the both of us, so we can both kind of back and oh, forth. Thank God. Um, and I'm going to invite you to ask questions as well. And what I do when I ha have my show is I actually try not to over-prepare too much. Okay. So I will do a little bit of research on my guests. Um, I will I will scroll through their IMDb. I'll scroll through their social media. I'll kind of look and see kind of a little bit about them. Um, I'll read their bio if they send something. But I'm not going to do too much hard research. And part of that is because I want the conversation to be natural. And I want my reactions to be natural too. And I want it to be able to go where it needs to go. And I always have like a goal for the show. Um, and, and so we'll talk about that, right? We'll... You know, we'll talk about where we're going, um, and you don't know, but I already know where we're going, and you don't know, but you're gonna figure it out real okay. fast when we get there. Okay. Um, and my guests don't know. Okay. I don't. So when they come on, either while I'm talking to them, something will become apparent to me. I'm always looking for that something, or I come in already knowing where it's gonna head and where I'm gonna lead the show. And so, we're gonna bring out our next guest. Um, you've actually met this person. We'll talk about how you guys know each other. And can I, wow, as I fall over, goodness. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring out our next guest, Ma, uh, Marcelo, are you here, darling? Hello, how are you? How are you? Welcome you to my <laughs> show, The New Agenda. You know Ophelia, my Hi. lovely intern. Hi, good to see you. Good I see remember you. you. You were teaching me how to slate. That's, That's right. Yay, That's right. so welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. So Thank Ophelia you. has had the opportunity, as um, we've kind of talked about, to intern. She's also been interning on a local production that's being filmed here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, we have some great uh, people in from LA that are helping us put this show up. It's called Coyote Cage and Ophelia has been interning on that show as well. We're going to talk a little bit about the project and about the experience um, with the interns and all of that stuff um, and then we'll get into some other stuff. So I will start off asking a little bit about the production um, and uh, and then we'll get into a little bit about you as well. But let's talk. Let's start with Coyote Cage and your experience so far. Um, yeah. So uh, Coyote Cage is a and no spoilers. No spoilers. It's an independent film mm -hmm. being shot in New Mexico by uh, independent filmmakers from New Mexico. Yes. And um, I was brought on by a producer. Uh, Friend of ours, uh, I think you might have met him, uh, Jerry Angelo. We love Jerry. Love yes, Jerry. we do. He, and Aubrey. He is amazing. Wow. And his partner in crime, Aubrey. Yes. Um, they have a company called Rocket Pig. Yep. And they are producing this uh, great film. Um, it's written actually by Devin O'Leary, Albuquerque's yes. own, um, the paper. Um, entertainment news writer, Devin O'Leary. I love this man. He's an in incredible writer. Um, you can tell from the way that he writes his articles, but uh, the script is just really well done. Yeah, no, he's amazing. Yeah. Amazing script. Um, it's it's an independent film, but this, this script that Devin has written could be made into a Hollywood blockbuster. Yeah. It's that good. It is, it it's is. Good. It's being directed by Michael Perez. Yes. Um, so he is um, at the helm doing a phenomenal job. Amazing job. He's a, a very talented director. Yeah. He should do more movies. He's uh, so talented. Yeah. Um, yep. So um, I, I was uh, brought on from L.A. to come and help produce. I am uh, new at producing. So I am very happy to be in New Mexico producing this film. I am uh, learning a lot about producing. Uh, I'm primarily an actor, but uh, I want to get into producing as well, so uh, it's a great experience. Can you a little bit about your philosophy about why um, getting involved in filmmaking and the production side of things is important as an actor? Oh, well, um, if you can produce anything, then you can 
put yourself in. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> so, um, I and also uh, you know a lot of a lot of actors um, have a second job. Right. Yeah. Unless you're um, you know Hollywood star like you know Brad Pitt or or <laughs> J Lo, um, but. Um, so instead of being a bartender or working at Starbucks, I started to work in production as a production assistant. Yeah. And uh, I figured I could do that instead of working in, in Starbucks, for example. Are we allowed to say? Yeah, I mean, okay. if, they, if okay. they sue us, I'll just ask them for a sponsorship and then we can say their name all Don't day, every day. Don't sue us. They could pay us for it. <laughs> or they could just be happy we're promoting their brand. Yes. Send me coffee, yes. thanks. Like Lord of the Rings. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I started uh, producing uh, as a production assistant. I was a uh, office assistant as well. And uh, uh, I did a lot of crafty as well. I started a company in LA uh, doing craft services. Really? Yes. Okay. So that got me into a lot of sets and it got me to network with other producers and um, so I w it was great. I've been in a lot of sets because of that, and I've gotten to see great actors act, which is a, a great mm -hmm. learning experience, which is another perk of doing this. Uh, you get to be in sets, and you get to learn from professionals, and you get to see great actors act, yeah. and then you can compare yourself to like your process on set, and you can see their process on set. and. Uh, yeah, and, and, you know, to be honest, uh, a, a lot of the processes that I've seen some of these great actors have on set, they're not too different from my processes. So uh, so I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sponge. When I'm on set, I'm a sponge. I, I learn from, from everyone, and uh, uh, I, I just love it. I just love being on set. No You're matter what, front of the camera, behind the camera. You sound like me. That's like me with theater and film acting. Even though they're completely different, if I'm just doing acting, I'm happy. Like I'm content. I love it. Yeah. Regardless of what it is, just act, act, act. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's just like I'm just happy to be there in the process. Yeah. 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 And that's what it's about. You exactly. Know? You know. So I guess my question would be: So you live in LA, right? I do. Okay. So how the heck do you make a living to live in LA? Like. So L LA is very expensive. We know. We got very, very expensive. So I don't really live in, in LA. Okay. I live just outside of LA, okay. about an hour north. Okay. An hour. Yes, an hour yeah. north. Yeah, better than like 20 hours away. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, you got to do what you got to do. So um, instead of uh, being instead of struggling to pay your, your bills, I'd rather be a little more comfortable and live a little bit farther. And, uh, but you know, it's great because nowadays you don't need to be in LA to audition because you have self tapes That's true. and you can be anywhere in the world mm -hmm. and you can audition for anything in the world because of self tapes. And you know, after, after COVID, that's the new norm, so. Um, and being an hour away from LA is not that far. Mm -mm. It's not that far. Like Santa Fe to Albuquerque. Yeah. 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 Which is an Ophelia adventure every day. Literally, an Ophelia adventure. <laughs> oh my God, it's so fun. I really want to be anywhere else. So, oh, how many, okay, how many times have you auditioned? Like, like how many self tapes have you sent in? Oh, uh, hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. Oh God. Hundreds. But every time you do it, you learn something, which is the great thing about it. I just, I think that the more you do, the, the, the better you get, mm -hmm. uh, the more you can practice your craft. And uh, lately what I have discovered is that self tapes are an opportunity for you to show off your mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I don't even do exactly what they ask you to do. I do something different. Mm -hmm something that I know I can do well, so that I can maybe show somebody something different, something they didn't expect, and I can do that well, instead of trying to be something that it's, it's what it, it's written. So yeah. uh, that's worked out better for me lately. So 
So have you booked a lot of roles using that method? I've gotten callbacks. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, it's, like, it's a tough business. They're like, yeah, it is. Oh my god, talking about it. They're like, can you take direction? Um, no. I think I'm gonna do my own thing. They're yeah. like me. That's how I am too. Is I'm like, hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's more authentic. Look, like, and then you love it more whenever you're really just doing what you truly want to do. You know. You got I mean, you you have your personality. Yeah. You have your you. Nobody can be you. Nobody can be me. So. Show everyone, okay. show everyone who you are. But that is an actor thing to say. You're it's like, definitely a dance, right? I'm going to step in as director self. Yes. It's, it's definitely a dance, it right? Is a dance. So there is yeah. the yeah. the talent and all of the things that each actor brings to the table, and then there's the director's vision and what story I'm trying to tell, and it has to, like, we can't be doing different dances, right? Like, yeah. we have to come together, um, and and figure out how do we exist as ourselves, but also dancing in the same direction and not stepping on each other's toes, right? And so that's that's really a big challenge. I will say though, um, right now I'm casting. Ha! Love casting, oh my gosh. Okay, I do, I love casting. Um, I'm casting for um, our season two of Broadway Bound Live. Auditions are open now, guys, go audition. We're so excited. Um, we officially opened casting um, yesterday on backstage which is great um we've had kind of like a we had kind of a soft opening um for our our local albuquerque area and so it's been kind of open in within our local community for a couple of weeks before this so you guys might have heard me talk about it before but now it's nationwide um in the last 24 hours we've already received 58 submissions so we're really excited we're casting 18 young adults between the ages of 18 and 28 um, and uh, they will get the opportunity to um, receive some scholarships for, for vocal lessons, dance lessons, acting lessons, um, some really phenomenal training, and then they will compete for some really amazing scholarships. AMDA College of the Performing Arts has given us some scholarships to give away. I'm not gonna give all the details because you're gonna have to tune in slash participate if you wanna know more, but um, we, will, we will say that the grand prize um, winner will receive a $60,000 scholarship to Amda College of Performing Arts in New York City. Um, that will go to pay for, I mean, it's basically a full ride. So that's wow. phenomenal. Um, and we're so excited. We sent out one student uh, last, last season. Um, the pandemic hit in the middle of it, so he didn't get to go until a little bit later. He's out there now uh, doing phenomenally well and thriving, living in New York City, living the dream and going to Amda. And so it's been really awesome. Um, and so we're excited, but what I will say is that like I'm watching audition tapes and I kind of liken it to like a dating app, right? You're like swipe left, swipe right. Like that's literally what we do. <laughs> like, it feels very like a dating app, um, it, which is kind of terrible and I'm sorry. And it makes me feel sad for dating app people like myself who's doing the dating app thing. I don't know why I do this, but either way, left, left left if you see me just swipe left I probably won't actually respond to you anyways because it's kind of a joke I mean it's not but it is I'm just busy but um but yeah so the idea of bringing something different and unique to the table because right now I'm just seeing a lot of the same thing mm -hmm. um, I will say that there was an audition tape that came in today that Amanda and I are super excited about if you guys don't know who Amanda is she's our, my business partner and um, she's back there running the cameras hi Amanda um, so sometimes I talk about her, sometimes you guys have seen her, but, um, but her and I were, you know, every time an audition comes in, we've been like pausing everything we're doing to watch it. Cause we're so excited about casting the show. It's such a phenomenal. And I will say that casting is so exciting because you get to tell people, yes, I know that I also have to tell people no. And that is heartbreaking. Like there was one gentleman who submitted a tape and okay. I will say this, a, he didn't have a reader. Okay. His energy was great. He didn't have a reader. Um, so he's just saying the lines himself. He didn't even talk the other lines. So it was just his lines and then a blank space. And then and there was no ability to react to the other thing. And then um, I will also say that his backdrop was a little bit distracting. I was distracted by it. And um, he would like do, like he would start and then you could see where he cut it and like where he did multiple takes to chop it together. And so I will say like, I, I did not continue with him. So we went ahead mm. and put him in the no pile, partly because I already have so many other applicants who aren't 
having that problem and that have followed the directions. And it makes me question whether or not he's able to follow directions, right? Um, and so it's crazy to me to think that like self tapes are such a thing that um, technical issues or having a reader, these are the kind of things that used to be provided in the room. You didn't have to worry about any of that. You just show up and be your phenomenal self, right? Um, and you get the opportunity to like meet them and say hello and charm them with your personality. And now it's just limited to this, what's in the script and doing the job. And it feels very sterile. And I will tell you that it's my least favorite thing. But I also got to review 51 auditions today, which would have been impossible um, with, you know, so that's good and bad, right? That means that I can also watch so many more tapes. So it's more competition for you guys, right? Yeah. And the stakes are higher. Now I'm expecting so much more. I'm expecting quality sound. I'm expecting you to know how to be a film, a filmmaker, essentially. Yeah. Um, and for you to be able to have a friend or somebody that can read with you, I will tell you one of the challenges that I have, you know, as a busy person who's really bad at relationships, <laughs> is when I have an audition tape come in and I need a reader, I'm like, who's going to read with me? Cause I don't, I've, I've neglected all my friends. I can't be like, Hey Jake, how you doing? I know we've been talking like months and I know that you like left me a voicemail like eight times and I never called you back. Hey, want to read for me? Like, it just feels wrong. <laughs> And I'm kind of, that's where I'm at. So guys, have friends that you actually talk to so that when you need a person to read for you, they don't feel like you're using them. I have a solution for that, actually. <laughs> huh? I have a solution for that. There's actually an app for that. Did you know that? I was oh. going to say that. What, which one? <laughs> There's a reader app. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What's it called? I oh, don't you can't remember. Say. I don't remember okay. either. I don't remember either. I just, I ran across it um, <laughs> when I was, I was trying, because I'm, because Backstage is a new platform for us to use as casting, and I was actually kind of uncertain if we were gonna use it. I'm gonna go ahead and promote it because A, it was super easy for me as a casting person to set up, um, and it didn't, like, I'm sorry, but I struggled greatly with Actors Access. They've really created a system that's made it very hard for independent projects to put something up on Actors Access. Um, there's just a lot of jumping through hoops and I've literally been fighting with them since July and I gave up. And so Actors Access, I want you to know that I went ahead and cast my show on Backstage because y'all are being sucky. So yeah. thanks. But um, so I was trying to find an app um, to see if there was like the casting side on Backstage. And, and there's, as, as far as what I can see, there is not, which is sad. Um, so I do think that that's a problem. I also don't think it's widely used. So that's a problem. Um, Ophelia wasn't on there, so. Um, on where? On backstage. Oh, <laughs> I actually have been wanting to go on backstage, but you also have to pay a lot of fees for backstage. Really? There's a pros and a cons of backstage. If you're an actor on backstage, you have to pay like a monthly or like a yearly fee to actually okay. submit your audition. Okay. Which well, you do yeah. on Actors Access as well, unless you have an agent. So I'm wondering, but I don't see agent submissions on backstage. So maybe that's it too. I have been wanting to go on backstage. Oh, that's okay. definitely a top tier thing. Well, really and maybe we can sit down and look through you that should. because I don't know what the actor yeah. side looks but like. But I do agree with that though. Like that whole like taking directions thing is definitely a strong thing to know because mm -hmm. then it shows like your adaptability of like if you can do this or if somebody else can do it 10 times better, but also, you know, mm -hmm. listen. Well, and it's, yeah. it's, it's a challenge because it's not about just the acting anymore. It's not. It and not. and I felt bad. I was like, oh. Oh no. But also, another tape comes in and it's just better. Yeah. It just it's just better. And it's like, well, who do I give it to? I only have so many slots. I'm yeah. only casting so many roles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I yeah. feel. Whenever I submit my self tapes, I'm like, am I gonna do what Ophelia's gonna do, or am I gonna do what this character is gonna do? Well, you gotta have us. A balance. You, you gotta have well, that, yeah. but you also have to have a section of your house. Yep. Where you can actually do self tapes. I know. There's like so a dedicated. Oof. I yeah. know. Oh my god. Yep. Stress me out just talking about this. Yep. yep. So those those actors that uh, don't have the quality that uh, is expected from casting directors, you guys, you need to do that. If you're an actor out there and you're you're, oh, there's a camera. If you're an actor out there who is trying to uh, uh, do good mm -hmm. with your self tapes, you need to have a dedicated area with a, a, a wall that is just one solid color. You need to have a camera and lights, a ring light, 
it's uh, mm -hmm. something, but you need to have lots of light so that they can see your face and, uh, and good sound. Mm -hmm. Good sound is important, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I would say that um, I, myself, and I've heard from other casting directors, I'm not a casting director, but I am <laughs> highly, well, Amanda you do, actually. You do a lot of things. I, I do. Well. Um, Amanda actually is, is our official casting director um, for Broadway Band Live. Um, Emma did it before, but Emma's not here. We love you, Emma. We do. I love her so much, but she's off in Disneyland World, oh, Disney World. So she got an internship. We love her. So, um, but so, um, they're really officially the. But I'm very involved because I can't not be. But um, I will say, like, I hate ring lights. They make you look evil. Like you have demon eyes. And, but you can get like these very cute little microphones um, that connect to your iPhone or, yeah. or other brand of phone if you have something else, good God. Um, mm -hmm. But they can connect to your phone um, and they just clip on and yeah. they provide great sound. I mean, you can buy them for like 20 bucks or like a really good one for like 60 bucks. So yeah. I will say that one of the challenges, and maybe you guys can talk to this a little bit, um, with all of these requirements and equipment and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, just thinking about like, okay, if I'm a single mom, and I have children, obviously single mom, that makes sense, right, I have children, um, or cats. <laughs> but, um, and I'm trying to do a tape, um, it's very different now. It's like, I have to create a space in my home. Um, it's, you know, maybe I don't have that space. Maybe I don't have the ability for it to be quiet. Like, I've got children and dogs and whatever. I, it's, it's maybe not conducive, really, to a, a lower income population. And I think that that's one of the things that's a challenge because sometimes you might be able to get like older sibling to watch, you know, the baby while you go to your audition in person. Um, if you're leaving your home, you know, it's easier. But for me to convince even my mom to like babysit my kid so that I can film an audition tape, it just seems like, well, you could just do it by yourself. You know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's already hard enough to find childcare and then to have to add on, you know, so you could do a self tape or something like that. It can get really cumbersome and really difficult to, um, it, to get through. It's very difficult, yeah, yeah. I have birds, so sometimes... <laughs> I was like, my, we have a lot <laughs> in, my, in my auditions, you hear them chirping, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, something there's, there's nothing you can do sometimes. Yeah. So, as an actor, what keeps you inspired to, like, keep wanting to pursue that, even though... You know, sometimes you feel so frustrated, like you're not getting anywhere, like you're hitting a wall. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of break, like, past that threshold where you're like, no, I'm doing all that I possibly can to get where I want to get? I just love it. Yeah. I just love it. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've evolved. I've been frustrated in the past, mm -hmm. and, I have, and I have thought about um, quitting because it's, it's so hard, but, but then... I, I realized that I love it. Mm -hmm. So I do it because I love it, yeah. not because I want something. I just, I just want to act. And um, somebody gives me an opportunity by auditioning and they, <laughs> they want to cast yeah, me yeah. in something, great. Um, uh, sometimes you don't get that opportunity, which is why I'm trying to learn to produce. So that you can cast yourself. Yeah. God, you sound like me. Ah, wait, I have a question. What's your zodiac sure. sign? Uh, Scorpio. <gasps> oh my God, you're a water sign. Mm, yeah, I yes, guess. Yes, because I'm Scorpio rising, and, so I would know. Uh, That's then, why we're so intense and passionate about okay. what we love, because we're like we have that Scorpio in our in our chart. Where are you, Candace? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a Gemini. I was just uh, this is yeah, a little bit off topic. <laughs> were you in Hawaii Five O? Yes, I was. Oh my god! I think, I think we actually have a clip of you. Oh in no! Hawaii Five Wait, yeah! I think we're gonna roll that clip and then we'll come right back.
Good to know. So, um, tell me about, well, so I definitely want to hear about Hawaii Five-0. I did that thing where I, that I do sometimes where I've talked a lot and I realized, <laughs> um, that I, um, uh, well, go ahead. Tell me a little bit about Hawaii Five-0 because you know what? Well, you're a great host. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't, don't downplay yourself. I've been talking a lot today. <laughs> I miss being in my chair. <laughs> Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, I used to live in Hawaii, and uh, that was uh, I was cast as a co-star. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get cast in LA for a, a TV right. show, you're a guest star, That's right. which is a, a better bump. A, 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 yeah. yeah, more lines, a bigger, bigger character. Mm -hmm. um, but the great thing about that experience was that uh, I got to work with the the stunt team. Um, and the, the dog trainers. There's a, a dog uh, in the show called Eddie. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's his, actually, Eddie is also Eddie in real life. It's, so it's That it's makes sense because it's a dog, and you can't call a dog a different name because they won't come. Exactly. Uh, so I got to work <laughs> one entire week with, <laughs> with a dog trainer. The children. <laughs> the children. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, that's what she said. Okay, we're done. I'm sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> oh, um, my God. Continue. Now I'm fully invested in this dog conversation. I love dogs so much. Uh, she was obviously talking about other things a minute that. ago. Go ahead, I, continuing I, on. I didn't yeah. realize it at the time, but um, I was happy to have been cast. But uh, that stunt, it's a stunt that with the dog jumping on you and biting you. Uh, that that's a stunt that not a lot of people get to do. A lot of there's a lot of fighting choreography in films, uh, falls, deaths, um, but a dog that that bites you, um, yeah, that you don't see that very often. So I feel very lucky to have had that opportunity. Um, a casting director in Hawaii uh, called uh, Rachel. Uh, at the time, she was called Rachel Sutton. She just changed her name to get married. Um, she cast me, and and uh, she's amazing, and uh, yeah. So um, got to work with great actors, uh, Chi McBride and Alex O'Loughlin, mm -hmm. and uh, great experience. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I know we only have a few minutes left, um, but I wanted to kind of ask where or. I mean, we've kind of been dancing around this topic a little bit all night, but when you find yourself at a place where you're trying to figure out who you are, how do you come back to, to that moment of deciding who am I and um, do I want to stay with who I've always been or do I want to make a change? Like, how do you find yourself and who you want to be? In real life? or In, in real life. In, in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In both worlds. Yeah. I think you just have to come to terms with who you really are and just be comfortable there, I think. And it's hard for a lot of people, I think. Um, I think for me, uh, that was very important uh, to be an actor. Yeah. Because uh, you need to be grounded and uh, you need to um, be able to portray different characters and different people and you have, you have to come back to, always come back to ground zero, which is you. Yeah. And you gotta, you gotta know yourself. You gotta know yourself, you gotta be, if, if, if you are funny, you're, that's a great thing to be, funny. If you're, if you're a, seri a serious person, well, you're a serious person. If, if you're good with people, you're good with people. Yeah. But you gotta know, what your str your strengths are, and you got to know what your weaknesses are, and be comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah, I will say that, like for me, I mean, I still have moments where I'm not sure who I am. Right, like there are moments where I question everything. I mean, I know, like, um, and you know, Ophelia gets to deal with me day in and day out. She's literally my intern, and she's my intern. She's not just a catharsis intern. She's oh. my <laughs> intern, and so she is literally yeah. with me day in and day out. Um, and, and has, even in the short time we've been together, seen me go through these like moments where I'm having like, oh my God, breakdowns. Um, and little ones, I, I suppose. They're not necessarily big ones. But, um, but I will say that like, it was really probably, I was like 34, no, just kidding, I'm only 29, um, 24 years old-ish, <laughs> that, um, that I, you know, just a couple of years ago really, where I kind of had a moment where I just said, you know what, I'm done 
um, settling and I'm done um, being somebody else and I'm just gonna be okay with me. And there was a lot of things, like I had some body image issues, like I really didn't like myself, I didn't like my body. Um, it's very true, like literally very, very true. Um, I just didn't like my, myself. And at some point I just had to like stop and say, okay, number one, what things bring me joy? And that was where I started, what, what things bring me joy and what things take away from that joy or, um, or, or go in a direction that takes me away from that joy, right? Because some things aren't like direct, but it's like this kind of meandering that we do, right? Mm -hmm. And so some of it is like making hard choices. Like last week in the intentional moment, we talked about making hard choices. And this week, I forgot to do our intentional moment, so you're gonna have to wait till next week. But this is part of it, right? Is that idea of making hard choices where it's like, okay, these are things that bring me comfort and maybe even immediate satisfaction or immediate um, like gratification, you know? Um, and, but the long-term robs me of joy. It takes me away from the direction of my goals or it takes me away um, or adds to maybe my, my body issues, right? Or adds to my mental sort of like hate myself issues. Um, and so those are the things that it's like in the moment, maybe it's like you hit yourself sometimes. Oh my sometimes God, Candace you, hates herself. Sometimes yes. I you're, no you're amazing. You're an amazing yeah, person. Fabulous. Guys, 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 Please. listen, like and I appreciate that. We can have this, but I want you to understand <laughs> that like, and I am surrounded, somebody get this girl a TV I'm show. I'm surrounded oh, by yeah. beautiful <laughs> women. I have like I two am, minutes. Shut up. Oh my God. Oh. I'm, I'm very lucky to be here right now. Surrounded yeah. by you. But what Me I'm saying too. is that, is mm -hmm. that part of finding myself and becoming comfortable and confident in mm -hmm. who I am was literally making, I don't wanna say a list, cause you know, I love lists. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, but like literally thinking about the things that brought me joy that the next day kept, kept that joy, as opposed to like the next day feeling maybe uncertain or maybe not as proud of myself or maybe brought uh, some unwanted other things into my life that took me away from my end game, right? And then the other part was like things that like were grinding and like the day in, day out that are frustrating and confining sometimes or um, feel less comfortable, but that are making me walk in a direction towards what brings me joy. Um, and so those are the two things that I, those two places are where I try to exist and then paying very attention to the places where I'm settling and I'm bad at settling. Like I'm really bad at it, especially when it comes to romance. That's part of why I've been single and why I talk about it all the time is because I'm terrible at it. But you know, where I'm settling in other areas too, like this is like taking away, but right now it feels really good, right? And so it's like this little concession that I'm giving also jeopardizes my dreams, right? Because when we think about when we're walking in a path, if this is where my goal is and I'm walking this path, every little sidestep that I take this direction and then my trajectory is over here and I'm much further away from my goals. Mm -hmm. And so part of it is understanding, have I placed my goals where they should be? Do they bring me joy? Or am I simply settling for something that I'm okay with because for the moment it's gonna be fine as opposed to this is actually where I want to go and where I wanna be. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really big kind of challenge. And that, Ophelia, is the advice I give you today is to, to think about that. And I know that you're such a joyful person, but I also feel like, I oh, feel like, <laughs> oh, no. I feel like sometimes yeah. we put that on because we're afraid. And I just want you to know that you don't have to be. And I wanna encourage you guys and out there in the world that it's okay to have moments where we are afraid or where we don't mm -hmm. like ourselves or where we aren't sure of where we are and where we don't have to pretend, we don't have to pretend like we know all the things, um, and like we we're where we at, where we're at, and we know that this is the path, and we know that this is what you know what I mean. Like it's okay, it's okay to sit here and go, I only know one thing about me, and that's that I like chicken, and that's actually where I was at when I was 19 years old. You could call my mom and ask her, and she will tell you about this whole mental breakdown that I had, where I didn't know who I was, I didn't know where I was going, I didn't know what I wanted to be, I didn't know anything. The only thing I I I settled on was I know one thing about me, and that is that I like chicken. Fried chicken specifically. Like that was the one thing that I, it was the only thing I could hold on to. It was the only piece of my identity that I knew, that I knew that I knew that I knew. That's how in my spiral I was. And it grew to love. 
Mm. And it did. <laughs> I like chicken, and I like eating it on television. <laughs> and that's how I got here today, guys. Yes. Well, I, I gotta I gotta say something. You gotta have high standards for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have 12 seconds. Go ahead. <laughs> and don't deviate from your goals. Yeah. yeah. Stay fabulous and fierce and live on. That's yeah. right. And that <laughs> is about all the time we have for the day, that guys. That is all. Yeah. So, thanks so much for coming out. And it's time for a new agenda. Try again. It's time oh, for a, a new, new agenda. agenda. Woo!